Hello and welcome back to Open Everyone. You know, always inviting you to get social with us. That's right. Tweet us at BronxNet TV and tweet me too while you're there at Rina Valentin. So oftentimes fathers are portrayed as uncaring and uninvolved in uh, children's lives, especially in communities of color. And so our next guest decided to challenge those stereotypes by capturing the intimate moments between father and child, specifically in black communities. So here to tell us more about father figures exploring alternate notions of black fatherhood, we welcome uh, the Bronx Documentary Center program coordinator and gallery manager, Olivia Adechi. Hello and welcome Hi. and happy Black History Month to you, sister. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me on uh, here today. Yes, I, I know the introduction was uh, kind of geared more towards the photographer, but you are um, the curator, right? Well, so I work with our curator. We have a great exhibition coordinator named Cynthia Rivera, um, who comes up with all of our exhibitions and plans this calendar throughout the year of great exhibitions in our gallery space. So how, uh, I guess, how did Zun Li, uh, and is Zun Li, not that it matters, but it just sounds like he's Asian. Yes, so he's actually Asian and black. Um, and, and there's a whole story behind it that ties into like the reason why he started this project. Um, he tells this great story about when he was young, he lived in Germany and close to this army base. And he wasn't necessarily very close with his family, but a lot of the black GIs who were living, stationed at the base would welcome him into their homes and he spent a lot of time in their homes. And he saw this sort of tender relationship that they had with their kids that he hadn't necessarily seen before. And as he grew older, when he transitioned into being a photographer, he's actually a f trained physician and an educator as well. He really wanted to, he saw more of these stories and he really wanted to tell these stories because they, he thought they were lacking in the media. And he had experienced these loving relationships between black men and their children and their families. And he set out to create this great project around that subject matter. Well, I was able to see a few images and uh, hopefully we'll be able to share it with uh, some with our viewers. And I will say that it was apparent in l looking at them that he was able to capture the uh, for lack of a better word, the feminine side of, of a lot of these men, right? Uh, I mean, not, not to say that they're feminine yeah. men, but it's just like there's, this, there's that, that stigma as well as in men having to have to just always be masculine and macho and, yeah. you know, they're the, the patriarch of the family. Yeah. And if they're not involved, they come in to kind of like uh, just make sure that everything's handled. Yeah, I think one of the great things about his photographs is that they really try to underline the fact that men can be multiple things and that masculinity can be about loving and being present and tender to your family and that that's not necessarily a mother's role or a woman's role. And it gives these men space, I think, through the photos to be whole per people and not just caricatures of like strong, tough guys, but men are m multiple things. And I think these photos really highlight that black men particularly can are strong parents, are tender people, and they show love and affection to their children. I love that we were able to share some with our viewers. And so uh, what we did share uh, definitely displays the nurturer, mm -hmm. the Absolutely. nurturer within the men. Yeah. And, um, and you know, we're just raised, I think, even within the urban community, that the men are the protectors and the women are the nurturers. And so it's lovely that uh, he's been able to capture both sides of these men and particularly now uh, during this era right? Yeah. Uh, we need a lot of love yeah. you know in all aspects yeah. so it's nice to to see somebody capturing it from the males I understand he uh, worked on this project for about five years yeah the beginning of this the photographs are from about five years of work um, he connected with some families and met some families and he was able to embed themselves in their home and spend a lot of time with them like throughout their days learning about their schedule and their relationships to their kids and the sort of difficulties they were dealing with as individuals and as parent. Um, some of them in incredibly difficult social or economic situations and the amount of work it took to be there present, strong, especially fighting against sort of all our conceptions of fatherhood and all of the projections of fatherhoods we give onto men, especially men in communities of color. Um, so he spent a lot of time with these families, really trying to be there for those authentic moments where 
he's highlighting images we don't often get to see, and maybe because people don't want us to see them. Um, and so it's really special that he spent that amount of time with his families, and he's still very close to many of those families. So how many families do you know? I'm not sure, actually. Because um, in order for him to have that such I I intimate relations, yeah. I mean, he couldn't have done like a, a whole bunch, right? Yeah, yeah. It had to be, uh, how many images are on, uh, on exhibit? Uh, it's, there's quite a few, actually, uh, but you'll have to come in to get a of sense course. of it. But the <laughs> That's great the thing, whole idea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But it's great because some of the families will be coming as well. The opening reception is Saturday. Uh, it starts at 6 p.m. and everyone is welcome. Some of the families will be there because a lot of the families he worked with were from Harlem and the Bronx. Um, and That's it's, the other beautiful thing, right? Yeah. Is like the 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 stars or, or the ones that are being uh, uh, a light is being shined on them are are uptown yes, people. Yes, absolutely. They're people from uptown, so yeah. it's not uh, you're, th there isn't that much of a detachment in like oh that could be me. And yeah, I'm saying absolutely. that just for those who are here watching right now, considering like oh should, you know should yeah. I consider seeing that? It's like the idea is that you explore and it's right here in your backyard. Absolutely, and. The these are faces of your neighbors or coworkers, people you see on the street. And so I think it's important to highlight those people, those everyday people, and highlight the beauty in their lives and the love in their lives. And also, I'd say about our gallery space, it's not like one of those downtown galleries. We're very much oriented towards the community and open to the community. Most of our programs are free, and we love having our neighbors in there. And we love seeing our neighbors, and especially it's especially spe particular when our neighbors are up on the walls in these great photographs. So we're always excited to bring this kind of work that reflects the people that are around us and highlights stories about them that aren't necessarily told very often or heard of very often. So we really welcome everyone to come out, see the show. Even if you can't make it on Saturday, come in another day. Our gallery is open every week, and it's free. And our programs are available. We do programs whether they be screenings or artist talks or other discussions, they're free and they take place pretty much every week. I know you guys have been doing a really great job. How long Thank has the Bronx you. Documentary Center been up now? We've been open since 2011. Since 2011, but you've expanded like yeah. really, really massively when it comes to your outreach and, and also the, the curations, right? Because yeah. it's films, it's uh, art exhibits, it's uh, photo, photo, photography exhibits. Yeah. Um, you also have uh, performances sometimes. Yes. It, it's really lovely and, and we're happy to share this with our viewers. So this particular exhibit is going to open on Saturday and it'll be on display for? Until the end of March, probably the first week of April. Okay, and so what is uh, what are the hours, uh, the uh, gallery hours? So we're open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, Thursdays, we're open in the afternoons until 6 p.m. Um, until 7 p.m., sorry, actually. And then on Saturdays and Sundays, it's 1 to 6, 1 to 5, I think. So they, they would be able to obtain all that on the website? Yes, so if you go to our website, bronxdoc.org, you can see that. And then we're really active on social media as well. So if you follow us on Instagram or Twitter, you can find out about all of our upcoming events, uh, our exhibitions, our open gallery hours. We also have a great photo book library that's open to the public. Uh, which is one of the best libraries in the city, actually, and probably the country. And it's free, it's open on Saturdays, and we really welcome anyone who's interested in photography and looking at photo books and learning more to come and check it out. Lovely, yeah. lovely, great work. Thank, thank you. you for sharing with me. No, us. absolutely. Olivia. Thank you for having Olivia. me. No, this is great. Absolutely. All right, you guys. I, I could stay here and chat with Olivia all day. This is wonderful stuff going on at the Bronx Documentary Center. However, if you're interested in more information on the Father Figures Exploring Alternate Notions of Black Fatherhood exhibition, you can go to bronxdoc.org for everything that we just discussed. Okay, so you guys, as we all know, the um, people of Puerto Rico are still in need of our help. And... Um, after four months post-Hurricane Maria, much of Puerto Rico remains without power, in the dark, damaged, with people suffering. My people. So 
Governor Cuomo, who will be joined by Puerto Rico's Governor Rosello, has planned to call on Congress uh, a rally at Casita Maria for arts and education this Saturday, this Saturday, February 3rd at 10 a.m. We need you. We need you there. We need your voices. We need your presence. And Casita Maria is located at 928 Simpson Avenue in the Hunts Point section of the Bronx. Please come out and show your support for Puerto Rico. They need us. Okay, we're taking a quick break, but coming up, we'll sit down with the host of an interesting documentary-style TV show, so don't go anywhere.